All right. Uh, welcome back to Full Circle with Joyce. Uh, thank you again for your feedback. Someone here saying good morning, Joyce, enjoying the show. That's Flore from Kikuyu. Another says, um, I'm following this very captivating topic and it's really facing giants. It calls for listening to the mighty voice. That's Nyandera from Likuyani. Um, Joe here saying, sometimes, Joyce, though, you have no one beside you. And I think the best thing is to allow the Holy Spirit, our greatest intercessor, to deal with everything. Absolutely. Um, God is always that present help for us. And so be encouraged with that this morning. And so with that said, I want us to turn our attention to our next guest, who in many ways has faced giants of his own. His name is James Gikonyo, and he's a photographer. Karibu sana to the show. Thank you so Looking much. very dapper. I'm a semi, he's tetaying all photographers. <laughs> they said you look like homeless Work people. Work on a reputation so. buyer. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> anyway, welcome to the show. Yeah. We want to talk about depression, anxiety, and self-care during COVID-19. Now, James, you have actually overcome depression and anxiety yourself. Yes. When was this? Um, my first uh, suicidal thoughts were... When I was in class five. Wow. Yeah, I was very young, but uh, in a way, being an extrovert, I used to love being around people. So being accepted um, by others for me was a very big deal mm -hmm. growing up. Mm -hmm. But uh, because I was eccentric and I was very, you know, hyper, um, most people did not understand me. So I, I really used to struggle fitting in, you know, with people because you see when you're growing up, you're young and you, you're in school, um, you know, you're, you're not all over the place. Yeah. You, you're trying to concentrate, you're trying to, you know, obey the teachers and school regulations. I was the exact opposite. <laughs> I was a rebel from, <laughs> I remember my first case with with girls was actually in class one oh like no. I, I was just all over the place oh it, no. it was crazy okay so by the time i was getting to class five people had this perception of me and i had very few friends and i struggled a lot I, I felt alone i felt like no one understood me i used to love writing a lot mm. but uh, my parents were like you know focus with education you will get to write after school. <laughs> and then we wanted to write, you know, at mm -hmm. that time. Mm -hmm. Because that's when the ideas were, were many, you know. Um, writing was also sort of a therapy for me for a long time. Mm. I used to do a lot of poetry. Okay. And uh, short stories as well. I, I started pretty early. Okay. And I remember even the school magazine, uh, One Can Echoes, used to feature my poetry every year. I was... I was an excellent writer wow. growing up, but we, we kept fighting with my parents. Okay. So again, I also felt my parents do not understand me. And at some point you even had to move schools. Yes, but that was, that was in secondary school. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So first suicidal thoughts at grade standard five. I mean, that's very, very young. Yeah, that's quite young. Do you recall when your next suicidal thoughts were and, and what sort of caused it? Um, so I struggled uh, class five, class seven. Um, class seven, it was about a certain girl. <laughs> but uh, I think class eight, I, I, I decided to, you know, settle really on my studies. Okay. You were you had a crush on someone or something? Yes, a huge crush. In standard seven? <laughs> oh, my gosh. I, said, <laughs> I was hyper, you know, you know. The teachers used to ask what is wrong with my hormones because I was all over the place. You know, I was, I was the noisy one. Okay. I used to ask the most awkward questions. You yeah. know, teachers really had. A, you know, I apologize to my teachers whatever they are. I gave them a hard time. Poor Louis. So okay, so standard seven, then standard eight. Standard eight was okay. Mm -hmm. I, I I think. Uh, I think I, I, I purposed to really check on my studies in class 8 for, for some reason. Um, education had become a bit competitive. I used to become number one through class one all the way to class six. Mm -hmm. And then class seven, I started dropping. Because so of this girl. <laughs> <laughs> it might have been because of the girl, but okay. there was also a lot of attention to writing. I see. 
I started my first manuscript in class five. It was told by the teacher. Oh, felt no. very bad. I started the second one. I, I finished it in form two. Yeah. <laughs> and then now when I went to form one, now that was the real challenge. What yeah. what happened? Um, I was in a academy, a private school in primary school. Then I, I went to a public school. Mm. This is a guy who has been spoon fed all his life. Um, when I was born, my parents were very poor. So when they, you know, they worked hard and, and got a bit of money, I think they spoiled me. Mm. So when I went to Moho High School, it was crazy. Mm -hmm. um, independence for me, having my own money, no one is telling you to go to class. You know, you can sleep if you want. It was, it was crazy. Yeah. So I think I got too excited, got too overwhelmed. And the way people um, accepted me was with a lot of hatred, mm -hmm. a lot of ridicule. You know, most people in public school are from not well-to-do families, right? And you have this guy always in the canteen, you know. Mm. Games time, I used to read novels. Like, I, I never played <laughs> games. like, who is this bougie child? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they were wondering, who is this guy? Yeah. And I remember I was chosen a, as the prefect in Form 1. And it became such a yes. huge deal. <laughs> there was a night, um, lights went off, and guys were throwing chairs at me. Whoa. Yeah, like, like it was... It was personal. So is this when now you moved schools? No, I, I moved later. Okay. Um, I guess my my reaction to that became um, the, the wrong kind of company. Okay. So I started, you know, a, a little bit stealing here and there, you know, selling things that are not even supposed to be in school and okay. all that. A lot of indiscipline cases. Right. So the cases piled up. Um, in Form 3, the deputy advised my parents I need to move to a better school because okay. th the way I'm going, I wasn't even studying. I remember in my high school, I used to get even like 3% in math because I, I just used to live life. Wow. I just used to, you know. I want us to, because my time is running yeah, out, sure. but I want us to get to know mm. your adulthood now. Yeah. Have you experienced bouts of depression even as an adult now post high school? Mm, it's been more of anxiety. Mm -hmm. The good thing about after I, 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 I finished school, I went to part 54. Okay. It was a very safe space for me. They helped me deal with my depression. Mm -hmm. It was a place where I could be vulnerable. I, I could talk to people. And people let's like talk me. about that because men, yeah. especially young men, <laughs> just don't admit when they're feeling sad or, or down how, how confronting was that experience for you to now have to open up to people and be vulnerable to them um as an artist one of the things that helps me express myself is actually being vulnerable um to use an extreme case if i'm shooting a project about rape i'm putting my mind in the rape survivors you know, state, how they feel, you know, the embarrassment, the shame, the trauma. So being able to relate with art that way helped me to be a bit courageous, right. you know. So I, I remember when when I joined Power, I, I, I used to struggle a lot, but I used, uh, I, I found so many friends around me who had gone through depression, mm -hmm. some had gone through bipolar, and they were open about it. In power, we are actually allowed to break down, mm. you know. Mm -hmm. And these are space full of, you know, artists and and all these, um, you know, activists. And right. they, they they understand you. They talk to you. And also, Fatuma's voice as a space for poetry really mm -hmm. helped me. Mm -hmm. Because now I was able to write and express, express in a room full of people that actually understand what it means to you know, to have, to be in that darkness. And I guess that's a key point for a lot of young people and yeah. young men yeah. to find some sort of outlet. Yeah. 
um, to be able to express themselves appropriately. Definitely. Because there's ways you can express yourself, but it's a very negative way. Um, you know, it could be indulging in certain vices that you shouldn't be or selling stuff you're not supposed to even mm. be in possession yeah. of. Um, so find a positive way to really be able to express your emotions. That will go a long, long way, it sounds like, yeah. as far as helping you actually deal and, and to cope with things. Yeah. And you talked earlier about company and the sort of people that that were around you and I, I, I want to ask as well you know has dating and in, in sort of because you talked about in your younger days you you know you were <laughs> you were that guy yeah I was Johnny Bravo <laughs> you when I was young you know <laughs> <laughs> you were that guy yeah um how was that now translated into your adulthood and has dating had a sort of a positive or negative impact on you now learning to cope and deal with anxiety um my last relationship was very empowering mm -hmm. i met a lady who i was i can say naked with like you know very open mm -hmm. because she was she was very open-minded and she was very you know uh she was able to hold my hand in those tough times we even used to pray together. Mm. Believe me, you that's the only <laughs> person I've dated that we actually used to pray together. And, and you see, it was powerful meeting someone who actually understands you, mm -hmm. you know, listens to you, gives you advice, encourages you. So I can say dating plays a huge role. Right. And um, if you're dating the right person. Yes, if you're dating the right person, because again, um, you know, some of the people who committed suicide, for example, internationally, we have people like Avishi, mm -hmm. and you kind of watch his documentary, he was probably not in the right, you know, circles. He was not, you know, th the circle was encouraging to continue with all the concerts. Right. Yet this guy, you know, he's, he has so much anxiety, he's depressed, right. he's having to take alcohol to, you know. Mm -hmm. So I, I think social, social circles are very important right. because even now all my friends know how I feel. Yeah. And I am here today because of my friends. And I know they are watching because sometimes they wonder, you know, men are not known to open, open up, up. Mm -hmm. but I... I, I I put myself in a, in the spot as many times as I can because you see it's in vulnerability that you get emotional um you know maturity okay. emotional intelligence wow yeah. very well said james i think for anybody who's going through anxiety or depression in this season there's a lot to learn from his story one being vulnerable is very key it's not a sign of weakness Definitely. that's how you get help and so um find a proper outlet um first of all to be ex creative and to express yourselves but also to be vulnerable and mind the company you keep so so important you're hearing you know examples of huge celebrities uh, but even in your dating life some of you guys use dating as a crutch unless your partner is you know someone that is actually trying to get you on the right track maybe you just need to take a pause from all of that so james i really appreciate you sharing your story very openly and very candidly and he's a great photographer you guys by mm -hmm. the way he's taken a few of my pictures um for switch so how can people find you uh you can find me on instagram at yes. lenses don't lie you can also find me on facebook uh james gikonyo photography like my page check my account yeah i might surprise you all right Yes. Thank you very much, James, Thank for you coming so much and for sharing. It's, it's great to see this other side of you Amazing. as well. With that said, guys, we do need to take a break. Coming up next, uh, we're going to be touching on relationships. Ladies, we have a conversation and a half lined up for you. Uh, Cynthia Wamboyo Chen is going to be joining me on set as we talk about the toxic friends you should not have in your life. Dennis will also be in studio continuing his weight loss journey. He's on the road to lose 100 kgs. He's over 20 kilos down now and we'll be catching up with him again today stay tuned this is full circle with Joyce <laughs>